All right, Sagittarius, let's get into a reading. So we're going to get an overall energy around your life. We're going to get energy around love, money, career, and advice. If you guys need anything, check it out down below. Let's see. What's coming in for you overall life? Mm, you got a lot of shifts coming in. Unexpected things are about to take place. So, there could be things being hidden from you right now, Sagittarius. You could be feeling called to make changes and you don't know why. I am saying that you are about to have a tower moment here coming up. So, there's going to be shocking news coming to you that might make you emotional, okay? This could be something, let's see, what is this? Yeah, listen to your intuition. Your intuition is telling you that someone could be confidently hiding something from you. So I am saying overall right now, you're feeling conflicted. Your intuition could be telling you that something's being done behind your back. Okay, I don't feel like it's necessarily bad. Some of you, there could be, uh, this is what I'm feeling. Some of you, somebody could be throwing a party for you behind your back. An engagement party, a birthday party, a baby shower. Some of you could be getting a surprise here coming up. And you know that whoever this person is, this person usually comes off confident. So if this is a spouse, you're like, listen, my spouse can lie like a mother, but they can't lie to me. I can tell that something's off. But this person might be very confident. So you are kind of gaslighting yourself and going, well, maybe I'm tripping. Maybe they're not planning something. Maybe I'm just reading in between the lines. No, you ain't reading in between the lines. You know something's about to happen. And it's going to be a new emotional experience. So this could be something you've always wanted to do. They're going to surprise you with it. This could be a reunion. Some of you, you could be having like a spouse or a friend plan a reunion for you and it's going to be out of nowhere. It could be, this is what they're showing me. So they're showing me a partner taking their person to a place and the person going, this is random. Why are you bringing me here? And their intuition is screaming, something's about to happen. Something's about to happen. But they're like, I don't, I don't, I don't get it. I mean, I've not been to this this river in 15 years, the last time I was here, I was with my best friend. And you might turn around and there's your guy best friend you ain't seen since you were 15. There's your girl best friend you ain't seen in 20 years. There's the best friend that you call a brother or sister right around the corner. And I think it's going to be a shock. And I think it's also going to be a new emotional experience because it's going to be something that you didn't expect, but something you knew was coming. So be prepared for something to like shock you. But I feel like it's a good shock. I don't feel like this is bad. I don't feel like this is the energy of, oh my God, Sam cheated on me. I feel like it's an energy of, you dirty little liar. You told me you weren't planning anything. And, but your intuition is saying, so-and-so is acting weird. Give me your love life. Okay, you could be thinking a lot about the past in your love life. Not really seeing something clearly when it comes to your past. I'm seeing in your love life, you could have thought something was going to be a new beginning, but it ended up being a, a new disappointment. So you could have been willing to give someone one last chance. You could have been willing to let someone in your life, whether it was a family member, a friend, a lover, an ex-partner, you could have been willing to open up and allow someone to come back in and you could have thought, you know what, this is, this is it. This is, this person's honest. This person's truthful. This is a new beginning. But you could have then got really disappointed because it didn't work out. And it could be something that burdens you as well. Because your intuition could be telling you. Okay, some of you, you're about to get communication from some. Okay. This is what they're showing me. So in love, I don't know why, but I'm getting for some of you that you could have a parent who's dating someone and that person that they're dating could have disappointed you. That person could be coming back, but you might be a little unsure if you want to forgive. So let's say that you found out your mama's boyfriend cheated, your daddy's girlfriend cheated. Let's say that this is a parent who always makes you promises they can't keep.
Let's say this is an ex who would tell you everything you want to hear and always tell you you're going to get a new beginning, but the new beginnings were just like the last beginnings. Even when you thought you were getting truth and honesty, you weren't. You were getting an illusion. That person could be coming back and wanting to communicate with you that they're sorry for, you know, cheating on your mom, cheating on your dad, doing something that disappointed you. Someone here is going to take action and open up to you and say, I'm sorry I disappointed you. I'm sorry I disappeared. I'm sorry the first time me and your mama fought, I said, Fuck you, you ain't my kid. I'm sorry the first time me and your daddy fought, I said, Fuck that kid, I don't even like him or her anyways. Someone here is going to take action to apologize to you because of something that they did. And it can make you feel kind of on edge. You might not really trust this person when they come and open up to you. You might feel on edge. You might feel guarded. What I'm getting is that in love, you once were willing to have a new beginning. I believed in you. I believed what you told me. I believed what you said. When you told me you weren't going anywhere, I believed it. When you told me that you would be my dad or my mom, I believed it. When you told me that you were going to be here and show up for me and love me, I believed it. And you also showed me why I shouldn't have. That's what I'm saying. So I do see communication with that person and them saying, you know, I'm really sorry that I disappointed you. I'm really sorry that I said I was going to bring in balance. And all I did was maybe see that I need to temper sides of me that are still wounded, still broken. And it could be a really big lesson for this person. There could be a lesson here for you is to not really depend on people or put people on a pedestal until they show you who they are. But there could have been a lesson here for this person. I see desire and I see you guys opening up and having a good, good conversation. So that's going to work out. You might not get back with them, but there will be good communication of them opening up, you opening up and you guys getting on a mutual ground. All right. Money. What's going on with your money? So I see you being burdened around your money and I see you needing to make a choice. Here coming up. You're going to have to take a leap or a risk. Some of you, financially, you might be about to separate from someone and you're scared it's going to ruin your finances. Some of you, I, I, okay, this is what I'm saying. Around money, there's something you need to walk away from. And you could be scared of it taking your finances. So let's say that you're a Sagittarius man and you're about to get a divorce. You could be scared that you're not going to have retirement once you get divorced. That you're going to go from being a homeowner to having to pay so much child support and alimony. And now you don't got a place to live. You can barely put food on the table. I'm seeing stress here. And I'm seeing financially, you could need to take a leap or a risk, but you're scared. I'm scared to do this. I'm scared that it's, if it's going to be the right choice or not. You could be needing to make this choice from love. This could be giving someone a home or letting your ex-partner buy your home. Even though you kind of don't want to, there's a part of you saying, make the choice from love and let them buy it. Yeah, you might be living in an apartment, but do it. But you could be scared of taking that leap because financially you don't want to put yourself in a bond. I mean, nobody wants to feel lack of security when it comes to their money. So I definitely feel like there's going to be a choice here coming up that you're going to have to make almost on the whim that could put your finances in jeopardy. Do you want to sell that second home you've been using as, a, as an income booster? Do you want to sell it to your family? They need a place to stay. You're used to having that extra income, but right now you're feeling called to allow someone to buy a home that you maybe once bought when the market was great. I'm definitely seeing that you're going to have to make a choice from love and it's going to be a hard choice, okay? Career. I'm seeing here coming up in your career, there could be collaboration, but you could be falling out of love with your career. Some of you... You don't love what you do anymore. You don't even like it. It's starting to become very burdensome. You could even be daydreaming about doing something differently. So let's say you've been a teacher for 15 years. You might be over teaching. You might be at a place where you're like, ah, dream of the day. I don't have to walk in here. I dream of the day where I don't have to hear Miss Johnson one more time or I'm going to scream. At one point, you used to love your job, but right now you don't see a way of falling back in love with it. I am seeing, though, around your career, there could be something new that's about to take place. Either a new teacher coming to the, pros to the prospect, 
to the district. This could be you changing grades. There's going to be a shift taking place right when you're so fed up that you don't know if you're going to be able to handle this career anymore. This could be maybe you're a nurse and maybe you're so burnt out that you don't know if you're going to get 10 more years out of you before retirement. I am seeing, though, that there could be a change in the hospital, in the school, where you're then going to enjoy going back. This could be... You know, maybe there's going to be two new nurses being put on the floor with you and you hate working with young nurses, but maybe here coming up, these are going to be your favorite nurses and they're going to make you excited to come into work again. They're, you're going to be their old best friend and they're going to say, oh yeah, that's my best friend. I know she's in her 60s, but we love, we love Patricia. She's our favorite. And it's going to make you feel like you remember what you were missing. It's gonna make you feel like, you know what, I remember when I used to love my job and there for a while I had lost hope. There for a while the burden of coming in and saving lives and hearing those machines beep and beep and beep and beep felt like it was gonna put me over the edge. But now that so-and-so took the hospital over and I really love the manager that I work for and now they're not so uptight and you can actually laugh a little bit and they really treat us as humans, the emotional experiences I'm getting now is making me see this is the reason I picked this job a long time ago. This is the reason why I decided to become a teacher. Some of you, when it comes to your career, you've lost the vision. You don't remember why you started waiting tables. It, you don't remember that it's because you needed to be able to work as minimal as you could, but make the most so you could be there for your children or just, you know, you could take care of your elderly, elderly parents. You have forgot your purpose. You have forgot the vision around your career. And here coming up, something's going to breathe life back into you so you can remember why you're doing what you're doing. Why have you worked so hard to get to where you're at? What put you in law school to begin with? Oh, yeah, it was that friend that went through that really hard thing and you witnessed it and you always said, you know what, I'm going to stand up for people who don't have no one in their corner. But sometimes when you're burdened and you're overwhelmed and life feels like it can't give you a damn break, you want to give up on the things that seem so hard, that seem like they don't bring happiness and joy anymore because life's too short to give in to everything that doesn't bring happiness and joy. We deserve to laugh. We deserve to be happy. We deserve to have joy. We deserve to say, you know what, I've worked my ass off. And sometimes it feels like I've worked my ass off, but sometimes I remember that the reason I'm a nurse is because I just seen someone I helped save their life five years ago. And if I wouldn't have been in the right place at the right time, there's no telling what would have happened to them. So some of you here coming up, there might even be maybe emails, conversations, people coming into the doctor's office and saying, hey, listen, I don't know if you remember me, but when you first started doing nursing, you gave me a piece of wisdom. You told me that my blood pressure might be bottoming now and nobody would listen to me, but I want you to know that because you said that, I took you serious and I'm feeling better than ever. Yeah, I was knocking on death's door, but because of you, you helped me get back to where I used to be. And now I can enjoy life with my family. You know, me and my husband just made it to our 45th anniversary. And that might be the breath of fresh air that you needed to be poured back into you for you to see, wait, I had a purpose. This was the purpose that I got into this. Because maybe if it wasn't for me, that person wouldn't be with their family. I wouldn't be seeing their grandkids and their kids coming in to bring them into the doctor, smiling and laughing. I might be seeing a different version of them. I might have seen the grieving version of them. So although I might feel burdened and although I might come in here and I don't want to hear these fucking beepers, I'm tired. I have a purpose. There's a reason I started doing this and now I remember. And now I'm going to come in and I'm going to say, you know what? That's going to give me the reason to keep coming in. I do love this. This, is, this gives me new emotional experiences. So some of you need to be reminded why you picked what you picked. Even if it's working at Walmart, why did you pick to work there? Was it for the nice schedule? Was it for the fact that you don't really have to be a team player? You go back there, you get that card of stuff, you bring it out and you start putting it out. There is a reason that you picked what you picked and you need to remember the purpose. You need to remember that you put yourself on that path for a reason. Also, be careful of comparing yourself to others because comparison is the thief of joy. And if you're comparing yourself to what others have or what you perceive that they have, you might get in the way of what you have. 
you can perceive that other people are happy. Let's say you have a friend who's got a business and she seems like she's the happiest she's ever been. But you might not see her when she's in the middle of the night crying on her computer because the store just collapsed and she don't know how to fix it. You might not see her biting her nails when she's trying to figure out how to pay her, her tax bill because she can't afford it, but she's, she, she's got it figured out, but one bad thing happens and it's all over. Comparing yourself to other people will have you thinking that their life is better when you don't know what they're sitting in, when you don't know what they're going through. So that's what I'm gonna say. For advice, they want you to, to remain strong. Remain strong. Recognize that you have strength. Recognize you have courage. And keep moving forward. Keep planning for your future. Better days are coming. All right, leaving it here. Have a blessed day.